In the 13th and 14th centuries, the Mongols shattered all the boundaries of what believed of what was possible. Their empire stretched from the coasts of China over Persia, large parts of Russia and the Ukraine, up until the gates of Vienna leaving a trail of conquest behind them. But it wasn't just their incredible numbers of over 100,000 soldiers that made them feared among others. It was their mastery of terror used as a weapon that came from one of the greatest and at the same time most horrifying leaders in history. A man whose deeds, both awe-inspiring and unspeakable, carved a path to an empire that spanned across continents, the notorious Genghis Khan. Welcome to Past Perspectives, and today we are taking you on a tale like no other. Today, we are exploring the life of the infamous Genghis Khan, especially looking at the horrifying things he did to his enemies to build one of the largest empires the world has ever seen. But before we dive in his incredible life, make sure to subscribe to Past Perspectives to see more in-depth history topics that you have never learned about in school. Genghis Khan was a name that even when just mentioned, struck fear into the hearts of his enemies and instilled loyalty among his following. The name Khan translates to ruler or leader, and Genghis means universal, so he was considered as the universal ruler, and looking at the incredible size of the empire he has built, this name isn't even an exaggeration. And even today, Genghis Khan, or the Great Khan, as he is also often referred to, is still a national hero in Mongolia, with countless of memorials and kids learning everything about him in school. The most famous monument of Genghis is probably his equestrian statue, which is a 130 feet tall statue made out of stainless steel showing Genghis on horseback. But how did his almost unbelievable conquest of half of the world start? Our story begins in the vast Mongolian steppe, a land of sweeping plains and nomadic tribes. In the heart of this untamed wilderness, a young boy named Temujin, who would later be known as Genghis Khan, took his first steps toward a destiny that would reshape the world. Life in the time of Genghis Khan was harsh and unforgiving due to the extreme weather, including biting cold winters and scorching summers, tested the resilience of everybody that was living in Mongolia at the time. But it wasn't just the weather that started Genghis Khan's life in a hard way. His family belonged to the lower ranks of Mongol society, and they faced constant threats from rival clans. While others simply gave up in this environmental adversity and died, those challenges forged Genghis' unyielding spirit and his fierce determination. In those early days, he learned the art of survival while he was following his father on hunting expeditions so he could master the skills he needed to track and capture prey. Despite the harshness of their circumstances, Temujin and his siblings found solace in each other. They would spend hours playing and exploring, their laughter echoing across the Mongolian plains. These moments of joy amidst adversity forged an unbreakable bond between them. However, not all was harmonious in Temujin's world. His half-brother, Begder, fostered resentment and sought to exert his dominance over the family. A pivotal moment arrived when Begder selfishly devoured the fish Temujin had caught for their evening meal. Temujin's anger boiled within him, a burning desire for justice. He made a fateful decision to follow Begter, biding his time until an opportunity presented itself in a moment of solitude, Temujin confronted Begter. The tension between them reached its breaking point, fueled by a mixture of resentment and a hunger for power. Some say it was over the stolen fish, while others claim it was a clash of egos. Nevertheless, the outcome was tragically inevitable. With a swift arrow from his trusted recurved bow, Temujin's first taste of bloodshed became a turning point in his life. He had taken life at the tender age of 14, marking the beginning of a journey that would lead him to become one of the most fearsome leaders in history. After the death of his father, Genghis and his family was abandoned by his tribe. Left with nothing, Temujin and his family faced immense challenges, but it was in the face of adversity that Temujin's true strength emerged. With unwavering determination, he learned to navigate the treacherous landscape, utilizing every skill and resource available to ensure their survival. During his struggles, Temujin encountered many other outcasts and individuals who had also been abandoned by their tribe. Because Temujin remembered the power of unity he learned in his young days, he started building his own tribe out of a loyal following of warriors who shared the same vision he had for a unified Mongolian nation. As Temujin grew older and stronger, his ambitions extended beyond mere survival. He set his sights on unifying the fragmented Mongol tribes and creating a powerful empire. Through a series of military campaigns and conquests, Temujin showcased his brilliance as a military strategist, 
winning battles and expanding his influence. Out of all of his character traits that made him extremely feared by his enemies which is his pursuit of revenge and no other than the murders of his father, and those that have abandoned his family have experienced that firsthand. The Tatars, responsible for his father's murder, felt the full weight of his wrath. Genghis Khan sought not only their defeat, but their complete annihilation. Just to give you a glimpse of what he did, archaeologists have found a pyramid of human skulls that Genghis Khan has built as a reminder of the consequences of resistance. But we are going to talk about the cruel tortures Genghis did to his enemies later on. Finally, after years of relentless efforts, Temujin achieved his ultimate goal. The tribal leaders convened to declare him Genghis Khan, the universal ruler, symbolizing his authority over all Mongol tribes. It was a remarkable rise to power, born from the ashes of adversity and fueled by unwavering determination. However, a unified Mongolia wasn't enough for him, and his new goal was to increase his sphere of influence, so Genghis Khan and his horde of Mongols traveled across the lands. Very quickly, the word has spread, and he became one of the most feared leaders in the world, and they became known for their ferocious cavalry, known for their lightning-fast speed and deadly accuracy. When faced with resistance, Genghis Khan employed devastating methods to assert his dominance. He showed no mercy to those who dared defy him. Idis that resisted Mongol rule faced a grim fate. Genghis Khan's armies would lay siege, cutting off supplies and subjecting the inhabitants to unimaginable suffering. Once a city fell, Genghis Khan's wrath knew no bounds. The victorious Mongols unleashed a storm of violence and destruction, leaving behind a trail of devastation and despair. Prisoners of war were shown no mercy. Genghis Khan's forces would execute captured soldiers and civilians alike, leaving no survivors to challenge his authority. But Genghis Khan's methods extended beyond the physical. He understood the power of psychological warfare, sowing terror and discord among his enemies. One of the most devastating things he did to entire cities was using the infamous tactic of scorched earth. Entire regions were laid to waste, with crops destroyed and resources depleted, leaving the population desperate and vulnerable. His cruel war tactics allowed him to conquer massive amounts of land quicker than everybody thought was possible up until this point. But with growing power, Genghis Khan's cruelty has also grown. One of his most infamous methods was executing every tenth person chosen randomly. These executions were shown in public, and like the gladiator fights in the old Rome were a spectacle of terror. Heads rolled, bodies dangled from nooses, and victims were trampled under the hooves of horses. But it didn't stop there. Genghis Khan devised horrifying methods tailored to each crime. Some met their end crushed under the weight of immense stones, while others faced the agony of being skinned alive. No mercy was spared for those who betrayed him. Some rebels were tied to wooden posts and left to the mercy of the elements. Exposed to the scorching sun and biting winds, they faced a slow and agonizing death. Others faced a more immediate fate. They were lined up before Genghis Khan, who personally ordered their execution. Beheading was a common method, swift and brutal. Molten silver poured into their eyes, symbolized the blinding of their loyalty, while others met their demise in airtight chambers, gasping for their final breath. This quickly turned people's love for him and the idea of expanding the Mongolian Empire into full-blown fear to become a victim of his rage. Genghis Khan's reign of terror knew no bounds. The horror he unleashed upon the world is a dark chapter etched in history, forever reminding us of the depths of human cruelty. This also shows one of the most famous quotes we know from him which says, The greatest happiness is to scatter your enemy, to drive him before you, to see his cities reduced to ashes, to see those who love him shrouded in tears, and to gather into your bosom his wives and daughters. However, like always in history, every mighty empire eventually faces its downfall, and so it was with Genghis Khan, the feared conqueror who once held the world in his grasp. But even the mightiest can be brought to their knees. Genghis Khan's empire, once unified under his iron rule, began to fray at the edges. Discontent simmered among his followers as the weight of constant warfare and his relentless demands took their toll. Despite everyone fearing the cruel punishments he has put on his enemies, whispers of rebellion grew louder as ambitious generals and rival factions sought to seize power for themselves. The unity that Genghis Khan had painstakingly built threatened to crumble beneath the weight of greed and ambition. For years, Genghis Khan was able to strike down every rebellion that emerged and was able to maintain the power of his empire. But as the years passed, 
Genghis Khan's once formidable vitality began to wane. His health faltered, and his body bore the scars of countless battles. The conqueror who had struck fear into the hearts of millions now faced his own mortality. With each passing day, Genghis Khan's grip on power weakened. His absence from the front lines emboldened his enemies, who saw an opportunity to strike at the heart of the empire. Surrounded by adversaries hungry for revenge, Genghis Khan's empire found itself under siege. The once unstoppable Mongol armies faced formidable foes who had learned from their past defeats and were now determined to bring the conqueror down. Genghis Khan's generals, burdened with the weight of an empire, fought valiantly to defend his legacy. The problem was that they didn't have the same strategic intelligence and not the same lifelong experience on the battlefield. Therefore, the odds were stacked against them as their forces faced relentless onslaughts from all directions. In his final days, Genghis Khan, weakened by illness and the weight of his own ambitions, found himself at a crossroads. His empire teetered on the brink of collapse and his mortality loomed ever closer. Up until this point, it is not yet clear if Genghis Khan simply died of the bubonic disease which for most archaeologists is the most likely theory. However, traditional lore say that on his last days, he decided to join the battlefield being over 60 years old, then fell from his horse and died months later because of these injuries in 1215. After Genghis' death, his allies took his body back to his home to be buried. According to stories, he was buried with so much treasure that nations were interested in finding his body. However, historians today believe that he was buried in a traditional Mongol grave, so nobody was tempted to desecrate the grave. To be 100% sure that the grave remained safe, everybody that knew the location of the grave was killed as well. And today some Mongols believe that the Khan of Khans will rise again if his grave remains untouched. After Genghis Khan's death, the empire he had forged faced a period of tumultuous transition. Power struggles and infighting consumed the Mongol leadership as rival factions vied for control. The legacy of Genghis Khan endured, but the empire he had built crumbled under the weight of internal strife and external pressures. The mighty conqueror who had reshaped the world was now consigned to the annals of history. In the rise and fall of empires, the story of Genghis Khan stands as a reminder that even the greatest conquerors are bound by the inexorable forces of time. I hope you enjoyed this video showing you the ruthlessness of Genghis Khan. Make sure to subscribe to Past Perspective. And with that being said, until next time.